And we are live with another session of the Captain's Corner. Welcome, welcome everyone. Um, this is your place to get informed about first steps um, to recovery and how Safe Harbor helps to create self and healthy communities. During our live session, um, we share inside views, real stories and also educational resources. And as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and we will get back to them later. Also, we have a YouTube channel and would be super excited if you could subscribe. I will share the link after our recording. And now let's get started. I'm Kirsten, first mate uh, of marketing at the Harbor. And we, I would like to welcome our captain, Kev, Kev Hoffman. <laughs> Hi, Kev. Hey. Happy to be here. Ahoy there and all that. You know what I was thinking when you were talking? I was thinking we should have a theme song and it should be kind of, you know, like um, Bob and Doug McKenzie back in the day doing, um, God, how come I can't even remember what it's called, but that theme song is do 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 or something. I'm going to think of a theme song for us. That's a great idea. I think we should do that. <laughs> so um, what's our topic for today? The topic is well, they keep choosing to use drugs. So this is something that um, we hear people saying, and maybe you out there, you have heard um, that as well, like it's their choice. Um, why don't they just stop? They, they, they choose to use drugs. So why don't they just choose not to use drugs and go into recovery? Um, so what, like, like Kath, tell me, like, is it, is it that easy? Like what, um, I mean, can I just use my willpower and say, this is not healthy. I'm just not doing it anymore. Like why, like, what is it? <laughs> well, that's um, certainly a piece of it, but for us to wrap our heads around it, this is another big challenge for us. Like this whole concept of addiction always challenges our almost prehistoric way of thinking about it, you know, and that is that it's easy to say, no, you know, that was the big tagline back in the 80s uh just say no to drugs and i think if it was that easy uh, we wouldn't be here where we are today um and certainly controversial because how do you deny that they're not choosing it they're going shopping for it they're buying it they're using it they're getting sick they're almost dying okay it's just a no-brainer like duh they're choosing it and they absolutely are choosing it. Um, but I think the piece that happens that we miss or that, that we really need to think hard about is why are they using it? Why are they choosing that? Mm -hmm. Why? So when I think back to the seventies, when I grew up in high school, we were all choosing to use different substances, right? There's a whole bunch of different substances around and we were choosing them. Um, and it wasn't until I got into this field that I realized, Hey, we were all doing that. Um, but why, why did some of us, that's all it was, was experimentation and, you know, we were done. Um, and why did it stick for others? Why did others get stuck in that? And it occurred to me as I've been learning is it's what I'm, what we're using the substance or the process like shopping or gambling or whatever, um, what we're using that for. Mm -hmm. Okay. So back in the day in high school, we were all using that for our road party. We were all getting drunk and playing caps and having fun. And we were just having it just part of the fun party thing. Right. And when the party was over, we didn't need it. But then we had some people in our group that weren't probably just, didn't just get that party sense, but also found out, hey, this helped me somehow. Mm -hmm. This helped me talk to people. This helped me with my anxiety. This helped me speak. This just took me away for a while from all the stress or whatever's going on in my life, right? So it wasn't just about to go and have fun. That might've been our first taste of it, but 
for other people, it did other things, right? So that's the interesting part. So what are they choosing then? Are they choosing the substance or are they choosing a relief to something? Mm, this relieves me. Talk. Yeah, it relieves my anxiety. It relieves my inability to talk to people. It relieves the stress. I didn't have to think about all that stuff for like two hours. It was gone kind of a thing. And I need that. I need that so I can keep going. Okay. So that's a whole other way to look at choice. Um, I remember back in the days when I was working for the AIDS network and people were being infected with HIV, of course. And I noticed that the level of support people received who were infected with HIV, uh, who contracted HIV, depended on how they got it. Did they get it through a blood transfusion at the hospital, which was perceived like no fault of their own? Or did they have it from uh, having unprotected sex? And especially as we know, it hit men who were having sex with men. And so that's a whole, whoa, back then that was like, this is like, oh, okay, God's coming to get you with the HIV, you know, like it really made a difference on how people were supported through that process, which seems to me to be absurd. They have HIV, you know, or they have an opioid addiction right now and they're dying of overdose. Like how they got to be where they are almost is irrelevant. We just have sick people here. Mm -hmm. So that choice, it really confuses us. It makes it look so easy because I don't do that. I don't do that. I have enough, what? Willpower, self-control, um, moral fortitude that I would never allow myself, right? Now, guess what? That's not how it works. We used to think that's how it works, but it's not how it works. It works up here in this brain. And if this brain, for whatever reason, isn't functioning the way it needs to, that's where we're going. We're going into these places that look like moral failure. Um, we know, you know, what we know about this brain, this prefrontal cortex right here is really important. We've talked about this before. That's our executive functioning. That's our impulse mm -hmm. control, our decision making, our uh, slowing thought down enough to think things through before we act. All of that has to be working really well. There's a whole bunch of reasons why it might not be. And that can be childhood trauma. That can be illness. That can be bonk on the head with a baseball bat. That could be a whole bunch of different reasons that we're only just starting to learn about now with the brain. So add to that years of alcohol abuse or uh, drugs like crystal meth. Um, what are they doing on top of that that may mm -hmm. already not be functioning the way people need it to be? So it could be not that they won't stop, but they can't. Mm -hmm. And then what do we do? Because holy doodle, we got to look at ourselves in the mirror and then say, well, what if it really, they can't, mm -hmm. what if they can't control that? What, and what if they don't want to, because this is what we see. We see people that don't want to go to treatment. Mm -hmm. We see people who have been making their, these choices and they've lost their family, their jobs, their livelihood, it, everything gone gone and still they're not stopping and i think this is what so what is so hard um, to understand like when when you are losing all of this like like why can you still not stop if you if you lose your family your kids your house and everything why is that not worse than 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 you, you think? think wouldn't you it's a no-brainer yeah. Yeah. But why would they choose it, do you think? So maybe are they running like, so maybe what is the alternative if they stop? So what is coming back if they're not using? So what if that using 
is the one, pe one, the few minutes in a day that they get some peace and quiet and they can exhale because that's what that's doing for them. It's not like mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. to go and use. This is like, okay, okay, I'm all right right now until that starts to go away and then it's right away, I gotta get that back. I need that feeling. So on a basic human level of survival, they are totally acting appropriately because mm -hmm. where they are, because what if you do stop and you've lost all, what if you were the addict right now and you lost mm -hmm. everything, you lost your husband and your kids and your job and you're staying at the har safe harbor shelter. And if you stopped, what is the mountain of things that is going to plow into you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if I think of that, I probably, I don't know, I don't want to stop <laughs> because this might be like so much that um, I feel overwhelmed just thinking about it. Like what, and then who can yeah. help me? And then add to that all the shame and the stigma of where you are. That's a huge mountain to get over all by itself. Never mind everything else that's going to come because it's right there behind you. As soon as you stop. Hmm numbing that pain, you know, Dr. Uh, Gabor Mate always says, don't ask why the addiction, ask why the pain. And of course, he's talking about those root causes and things that can get people to where they are. But that is a critical point. Um, because they're, it's working for them. So when you say, why would they keep choosing it? Mm -hmm. Because on some level, it's still working, it's taking that pain away because the other stuff is so big and hard to look at. This gives me some relief in my day. Otherwise, I am, you know, where? And I had uh, the guy I loved for seven years killed himself. And I used to think he always wanted to die. Uh, he had an addiction to crack. Um, probably for 20, well, he had an addiction probably for 20 years before I met him. And then he was trying to recover from that. Right. But I used to say to him, you don't want to die. Like, like not really. Like, what about me? Aren't I enough to live for? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe that's part of the problem. Problem. Or, you know, the things he loved, I would bring up to him. You know, what about fishing and camping and blah, 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 blah. Like we can get there. This can be. And he would look at me and I knew he was saying to me, you don't understand. Hmm. He always, he thought this pain is always there. It's always been there. And I was, you know, when he killed himself, I was like, oh my God. And I didn't, what didn't I know to do to help him? And all of that stuff. But I thought, Kat, you didn't know what his 20 years before you was like. Mm -hmm. And if you think that that's, that's your only alternative out of the pain, because now I stopped using substances to get through that pain. This pain is still here. It won't leave me. Mm. How do I now go after all of that in a different healthy way, right? And sometimes it just gets too big, I guess. And then they go, you know? And I know there's a lot of people that have had that same experience that I had. And that's why I'm always so passionate about trying to talk to people and, and trying to get people to see things in a different way. Uh, because in the end of it all, it's, you know, these are our loved ones. They're sick. And they need us. They need us to think differently. So, so is there an answer to the question? Like, how can we... Like what can we personally do and as, as a community? 
well, you know, and as a community, how does this affect the community? We're seeing right now um, in Red Deer, of course, that mm -hmm. this stigma and this stop it, everybody's being a dork and they better smarten up or we're not, you know, we don't have a shelter anymore now or may not. And certainly with the city of Wetaskiwin, isn't it? Very terrible place in the same kind of, uh, struggle with their shelter. They're nonprofit organizations who are trying to help, and city council shutting them down. Um, this is, you know, it to me, it's just so ridiculous to be shutting down services that, you know, the only services that are on the ground helping right now. Um, you know, I got another taste of uh, who I am and how so not so very far away from someone with an addiction. Uh, hey, what happened to me? Did I go all cloudy? Oh, there. Okay, you're back. <laughs> so when I, I had a gallbladder for a long time, hey, bad gallbladder, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. holy doodle, it hurt. And there was one time that it hurt especially bad. And I had been to emerge a few times with it. And this one time it was so bad and I was so sick. And they got me in the back pretty quick. And the nurse and the doctor were standing at their little station. And I am like, I'm writhing in pain. I'm rocking back and forth. I'm like crying. It hurts so much. And the doctor and the nurse are standing there having this little talk, which is probably important hospital business. But for me, no, there was nothing more important going on than the fact that I was in major pain and would you get mm -hmm. that medicine whatever it is in me now okay now and I the I want to say rage but it wasn't like rage it was like desperation or something I wanted to yell so loud at that at those people like I think if it would have lasted any longer, I'd have lost my nut, okay? And I thought, my gosh, like, that's how people feel. Like, mm. give me that now, because as soon as they gave me that medicine mm -hmm. and I could feel the pain subsiding, I was like, oh. And the, I right away, I said, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Right before that, I was saying, please, God, please, God, please, God, get that medicine in me. And I was just like, oh, thank you. And I thought, God, that must be exactly how someone feels who's dope sick you know get mm -hmm. me that right now you know and when our addiction or our substances like crack or booze or uh opioids or those addictions other than alcohol move really fast so we see people at their worst uh, much faster than we do if you're a shopaholic and you spent all the money in the house and your husband hates you and you're going to get a divorce uh -huh. or gambling or whatever it is, you know, you had to have those new towels for your bathroom again, because society said we're changing colors now. So well, everything has to go and we got to start again, or I'm not going to fit in. Right. All these crazy things, the physical pain. Cause when I tell you that, that I wanted that morphine really bad, and I preceded that conversation telling you about my poor old gallbladder. You right away accepted that. You didn't judge mm -hmm. me for that. That's you said, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a physical yeah. pain. It's okay, Cap. You can mm -hmm. have some morphine mm -hmm. or whatever. Of course, right? But because this is working in our brains, we think it's different, you know, but our brain can be sick. And we never think that that's possible, but it can. Yeah. Those things yeah. might not be firing right. And that, mm -hmm. that uh, desperation I was feeling to alleviate the pain was such an eye opener for me. Because uh, like I was going out of my head, like that I would go and yell at those nurses and doctors and swear at them and everything. I would just be like, <laughs> like the, you know, people I see that are Jones and for something, right? So how far away am I from that? If I, you know, if that yeah. level of pain gets like that, how far away am I? Because I want that morphine and I want it now. 
no question. Did I come out addicted to morphine? Of course not. Mm -hmm. My gallbladder got better. So I didn't need it. I didn't need that substance to take away that pain because the pain was gone. But what if the pain never goes away? Mm -hmm. And what if it looks too big? Right? Yeah. That's why it's always so important for us to be there, no matter what, where they are in that continuum of addiction recovery, to be there. Um, like that nurse was there for me. Um, she wasn't telling me to get out because I was in pain. Right? You don't mm -hmm. deserve medicine. You don't deserve help because, you, you know. Yeah. Well, and I, in a way, I did choose my gallbladder pain because I ate lots of popcorn from the show and muffins and things that bugged my gallbladder. So in a way, I did choose it. So should I, you know, in reality, I shouldn't have even got the morphine. I should have got kicked out for choosing my pain, if you will. Yeah, totally. Um, so, but, but this tells me like two things. Like one, that um, uh, like I choose, like it's in, in your case, um, like you, you just need to look at it from a, from a different lens, like really like what are we choosing, what you just said, and then that it's not as easy like because once, once we are in that situation, um, I mean, it's easy to judge if you are not using any drugs. Like if I, I always, when I'm in pain, even if I had a headache, say, no, I'm not using any um, Tylenol, I just sleep a bit. And then it gets so bad that I said, oh, what the heck? So, and then I use it. So. Who am I? Like, why should it be any different um, with with any other drugs? And yeah. um, who am I to to judge that if I'm not even able, capable to take care of my headache um, <laughs> or put down my phone if I say, okay, I'm not using my phone all day. And then half an hour later, I think, oh, maybe there was someone with something really important to me what I need to check. Um, yeah. So, so I think this is um, looking at it from a different perspective or like through a different lens um is really and to remember important. yes and to yeah. remember this brain this brain is like a liver it's like a kidney it's like um anything else in our body that can go wrong because we never judge people for needing mm -hmm. to escape pain if it's physical pain we always trip up when it's behaviors associated with our brains not functioning right, right? Mm -hmm. So brains do weird things. If you think about obsessive compulsive disorder, for instance, they it, it's also referred to as brain lock. Mm -hmm. People who, so you think of someone who's obsessive about washing their hands, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, they know that they know this is not giving them relief like an addict who's using his, or somebody who's using substances and goes for the substance to get relief for OCD. This causes lots of anxiety. They don't go wash their hands because they feel better because they never get to that point. That's why they keep yeah. washing their hands. Right. So their brain is locked like mm -hmm. literally, and it can't move on its own until it gets some help. Right. Mm -hmm. So Addiction is a little bit like brain lock, except there's relief associated with it. So then it does require some more training and therapy and teaching our brain that, believe it or not, a good conversation with a friend can be as life-saving as a shot of morphine or an opioid. Mm -hmm. To them, that's mm -hmm. like no way. Because they be de desensitized, it seems like mm -hmm. that won't ever stimulate me enough. Like I used to think before, once when I quit smoking, and I think I'll never be able to quit smoking when I have a cup of coffee, right? Because coffee and cigarettes go together. So now I'm not going to be able to drink coffee, right? But I, oh. uh, but so I had to think about that, and I had to think, okay, what am I going to do when I drink coffee without having a cigarette? Of course, they're both bad, but you know, harm reduction and all that, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember being surprised that I could enjoy that cup of coffee without a cigarette, but my brain had to learn that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah, it's getting your brain. It 
get so hypersensitized through substances mm -hmm. that the normal everyday stuff that we get pleasure from, it's hard for someone with an addiction to think that's going to be enough for me when I operate over here. I don't know. Right. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. That is interesting. I, I read um, that it's not related to um, to opioids, but I read uh, an article that even with with especially with kids when they are like nonstop on their phones, like the yeah. the likes and the buzzers. If somebody texts you and you, or you get a snap, <laughs> um, it um, your your brain is constantly in this hyper state and yes. stimulated. That when you put it down and you are in nature or you're playing with friends, suddenly everything is boring because um, your brain doesn't get these. Um, uh, triggers anymore yeah. so and then the next step is um and i forgot like who like who, who the author was but um the next step is like how can i get um how can i stay in this state and yeah. um like this author made even the, the comparison like this is the, could be an entry to use drugs because you're looking for a different way to yeah to stimulate. exactly well and that, that um it, Lots of people who have had long-term recovery would tell you that too, that the, now, you know, they can find joy in those commonplace everyday things now, whereas before they couldn't. But then of course, they've got a whole different toolbox than they were mm -hmm. operating from before too. And the longer we stay in those places without our phones or our substances or our shopping or whatever, the more we get used to it, our brain will adapt to that. It will get just as excited for that again, as long as, you know, we can mm -hmm. minimize this other stuff, we can get back there, right? And we can live there. And that's the trick for all of us. Um, yeah. Gambling, you know, they used to say that about the VLTs with all the lights and the whistles, like you're saying about the phones, right? That's what mm -hmm. They found that that's just setting off a whole bunch of dopamine and your brain's going, oh, this is like so much fun. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, it's interesting, man. Like we are the the hope and the the future of how we think and feel about addiction is going to change significantly, significantly in conjunction with what we learn about brain science and how our mm -hmm. brains work and how they need us to help them. Yeah, and how we as people start need to start looking at each other as people. Um, we really need to recognize how sick people are. They're just sick. Mm -hmm. and we need to re just remember that. What difference does it make how they got there? Yeah. The guy falling and out of an airplane and hitting the ground, get squished. And he chose to go up in the airplane and jump out. Deserves our help as much as people who are sleeping in my shelter right now. Yeah. They both be choices. Very wise word. <laughs> Very wise. Um, very wise, Kev. <laughs> so um, I think these are like uh, maybe like uh, good words to close our, uh, come to an end for our today's episode. Um, like look at people as humans and like look looking behind the addiction, like why are you, like what are they choosing? Like what are they choosing maybe to get away from? Um, Anything else that you would like to, to say? Um, I would like I everybody to choose to subscribe to YouTube. And um, let's get Captain Corner up there. It's famous as Coach's Corner. Exactly. And we will look for our for a song, Kat. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much, Kat, for our uh, today's episode. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, and we will be back next week with a new topic. We have something in mind, but we have to line it up first. We, uh, we will be adding um, guests to our channel, channel now, and uh, we won't tell you who it is, but um, it will be exciting. So uh, thank you very much, and steady, steady as she as goes. She goes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.